I think it's safe to say that when glass is drawn in the anime style, it looks beautiful. But it can prove to be pretty tricky when trying to recreate it in 3D. From understanding how it interacts with light and shadows, to getting the reflections just right, I thought recreating anime glass in Blender would take me a whole week to figure out. But surprisingly, it only took me two hours to make, and I'm going to show you how I did it along with a little bonus at the end for you. But first, welcome to the Comfy Mug channel. My name is Christian, and I spend countless hours learning how to make anime stuff in Blender so that you don't have to. So, if you want to learn how to make any anime shader in Blender, subscribe with notifications enabled so you don't miss out. And check out my Patreon. The first tier is only $2 a month, and you get custom-made anime shaders and assets built by me, and some occasional extra content. Your support there really helps me a lot. But with all that being said, let's get into the video. As always, the first thing we'll want to do is go to our render settings and enable bloom for better lighting, and in our color management tab, change the view transform from AGX to standard to see the exact colors we'll be using. We'll then want to hop on over to the system preferences tab and enable node wrangler if you haven't already, because it helps making shaders go a whole lot faster. Once that's saved, we'll head back down to the viewport and press shift A to add an object. You can use whatever object you want, or if you already have something modeled that's just waiting for your glass texture, you can use that too. But I'm gonna add a UV sphere and change the radius to 0.1 feet or 0.3048 meters if you're using the metric system for your units. Now, I wanna make a glass bowl for this tutorial. So by enabling X-ray in our viewport, we'll hit tab on our object and enter edit mode and select the upper half of the sphere and delete the vertices. We'll then turn on proportional editing, select the bottom two layers, press G and then Z to bring them up a little, and then press S and Z to scale the vertices down on the Z axis so we have a relatively flat bottom. Next, we'll press A to select all vertices, and then press E to extrude. Directly after that, press S to scale all extruded vertices down a little. The reason why we're making a second layer in our mesh is because this glass shader benefits heavily from an inner and outer layer, as it will sell the idea that this bowl, or whatever object you're using with this shader, has density. Now, the last few things we'll want to do for our mesh is shade it smooth, add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth out the jagged edges, and make some minor adjustments to our mesh, perhaps by adding a thicker rim with the loop cut tool, and placing loop cuts and adjusting their positions and scale where we may want some harsher edges. And before I forget, in edit mode, we'll press A to select all vertices again, go up to the mesh menu, slide down to the normals option, and click the recalculate outside option to fix any bugs in our mesh. Once that's all done, we'll add a sun with its strength set to 3. And with that, we'll be ready to start working on our anime glass shader. Now, after opening the shader editor, we'll add a new material and delete the principal BSDF. We'll also want to go into our Options tab by pressing N if it's not up already, enable backface culling, change the blending mode to alpha blend, and the shadow mode to alpha clip. This is just to have the proper transparency settings to start, but after switching those settings, we'll want to start by adding our main reflection for this shader. So, by pressing Shift A, we'll search for a bump map, glossy BSDF, shader to RGB, and a color ramp set to constant, with its white stop pulled away from the edge just a bit. We'll also change the roughness of our gloss to 0.4, and the strength of our bump map to 0.05. Connect the nodes as you see on screen, and then, with everything selected, we'll press Shift P to add a frame, and then press the F2 key at the top of your keyboard to rename the frame to Main Reflection. Once that's done, we'll want to add a secondary reflection as well that will be a little more transparent than the main one. So we'll then rename our new frame to secondary, change the strength of our bump to 0.1, the roughness of our gloss to 0.8, and slide the white stop of our color ramp to just before the middle. And so that we can see what we're doing, we'll add a mix color node set to lighten, press shift, control, and left click the lighten to connect it to our material material output. It may seem a little choppy on the sides right now, so we'll move to a more top-down view to see our current node setup more clearly. 
Now, you can see that we have two layered reflections, one of them completely white and the other a light gray. And as the values of our reflections will influence the transparency, we'll want to reduce the factor of our light in to somewhere around 0.2 so that our main reflection can be seen more prominently. And while our reflections are looking good right now, their edges are a little too mathematically perfect. We want to give them a little distortion to emulate the subtle imperfections anime artists make when drawing glass in 2D. So, much like in my anime metal tutorial, which you should definitely go watch, we'll want to add three noise textures, two color ramps, and a mix color set to linear light with its factor at 0.1. Connect the nodes as you see on screen and adjust the right hand noises scale to 13 and its distortion to 0.2. Working our way left, we'll crunch the stops of this color ramp a bit and change its black stop to a mid-gray tone. Moving on to our middle noise texture, we'll change the scale to 0.3, detail to 4.5, and the distortion to 0.7. And for our leftmost noise, we'll change the scale to 4, detail to 0.2, and the lacunar, lacunar, lacunar. That word gets me every time! to 0.9. We'll then press Ctrl T on our leftmost noise to add a mapping and texture coordinate node, change the vector to object, and connect the vector output to our right hand noise. Once that's done, we can add a frame around our new nodes, renaming it to reflection texture, and connect the result of our linear light to the height of both bump maps to see the effect. Woo. Editing Christian here. I almost made a big mistake early on in this tutorial. Between the time I originally made this shader and now when I've been recording the tutorial for it, Blender has changed the default setting that the glossy BSDF starts out with. So we'll need to change it from multi scatter GGX to just regular GGX. I spent the past six hours trying to figure out why my original version looked so different from my tutorial version, and that's why. But getting back to the tutorial. The result is pretty subtle for our main reflection, but a little more pronounced in our secondary, which is exactly what we want. And to give a quick explanation for what we just did, the linear light and right hand noise texture determine the bigger details and imperfections. The greater the factor and scale, the harsher the detail. The middle noise, on the other hand, determines the finer details, while the left hand noise influences the flow of those finer details. And one last tip for this, the bigger an object you have with this shader, the more you'll want to lower the detail of your textures to keep that simplistic hand-drawn look. As a rule of thumb, the more detail you have on a texture, the less stylized it will look. But anyways, to finish our glass shader, we'll want to add two emission shaders, three mix shaders, two shader to RGBs, a transparent BSDF, and a diffuse. Connect each group of nodes as you see on screen, with the result of our lighten plugged into the color of the left hand emission, with its strength set to 3. We'll also want to duplicate our lighten and bring it in front of our left hand shader to RGB, making sure to connect the color to the B input instead of the default A, and turn the factor all the way up. Also, we'll want to connect the result of our new light to the top input of our first mix shader and the factor of our middle mix shader. We'll then add two more nodes, a Fresnel with its IOR set to 1.01, and then a color ramp set to constant with its white color stop cranked pretty far so that it sits right in between the plus and minus signs above. We'll then make a frame around these two nodes, call it glass rim, and connect the color to both the A input of our new lighten and the factor of the left hand mix shader. We'll now want to connect our middle mix shader to the material output to see what we've made so far. We finally have some transparency where the values were darker and can see the shader really coming together. But one thing that's missing is the ability for it to interact with shadows. 
Even though glass is transparent, it still has a level of density to it that allows us to see its shape better through very soft shadows. And all we need to do for this is add a cell shader, which if you don't know how to make, I have a really quick tutorial linked in the description on how you can make one that can react to different colored lights in your scene. So feel free to check that out or just pause the video and recreate it here. But once we make our cell shader, we'll connect it to the bottom input of our last mix shader with the factor anywhere between 0.15 and 0.05. If you increase the factor beyond that, you'll either get some strange artifacting or you won't be able to see the effects at all. But feel free to make some adjustments where you see fit. One of the main things I notice when finding footage and references of anime glass is that sometimes it has a white rim outline where other times it has a light gray or even colored outline. I figure it's all personal preference based on the scene, so if you want to change the color of the rim, all you need to do is change the color of this emission. You can adjust the strength as well, but I personally find that setting it to 4 usually is best. And now here I was just about to wrap up this anime glass shader, but as a bonus to this tutorial, since their node setups are basically the same, if you want to make a clear plastic anime shader, all you need to do is turn off back face culling and increase the factor of the right hand mix shader to 0.2. Plastic is a bit denser than glass, being able to capture shadows a little easier, but it's also a lot thinner. So for whatever object you're using that you want the plastic shader on, you want to get rid of the second layer and recalculate normals outside. I find this anime plastic shader looks especially good on water bottles. But with all that, we will have finished our anime glass and plastic shaders that can react to different colored lights in your scene. But without a set of silverware, how will your anime characters eat from their shiny new bowl. <laughs> Lucky for you, I have a tutorial on how to make an anime metal shader, so go check that out if you'd like. Remember to like the video and subscribe, and comment what you're using this glass shader for down below. I'd love to hear about it. Also, check out my Patreon if you want custom anime assets at the start of each month, and also want to help support this channel so I can keep making these tutorials for you guys. I want to say thank you so much to all of my patrons, new and old, for being so generous and committed. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, you guys are the reason why I can make these videos in the first place, and I can't tell you how much you all have helped me out in these past months. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying the new shader packs. But anyway, Anyways, thank you so much for watching the video, I hope you have a comfy day, and I'll see you here next time at the Comfy Mug.